Hey everyone, this is Jay, also known as Jay Nemesis from eToro, where I trade as a popular investor. This is our weekly update for week 34 of 2018. Our trading stats this week, we have a portfolio change of plus 5.73%, which is huge. We have a realized profit of plus 0.04%, 16 trades closed, 13 were profitable, 3 were unprofitable, and our most traded this week was NVIDIA. Our top news this week, eToro's EOS drama. So this is specific to eToro, it's nothing to do with EOS itself. But uh, eToro, for some bizarre reason, closed everyone's EOS positions um, without their permission at some point uh, on Monday morning. Um, I've included this in this week's update, even though it technically happened in the time that should be included in next week's update, simply because it happened this morning and it's obviously quite a big thing that's happened. A lot of people have concerns about it. So uh, basically, eToro accidentally closed a bunch of positions for everyone's EOS. I believe they were all closed at the same price, but I could be could be wrong on that. And since then, eToro have come out with a statement saying that they plan to uh, reopen all of those positions on behalf of their copiers. Um, it will be reopened at the same rate that they closed at or better. And uh, effectively, you should own the same number of coins that you owned previously. So the best thing to do uh, if you're concerned about this and you had your own EOS positions is to go through, check uh, the price that they closed at when they closed, and then go and check your new positions and make sure that they've opened at the correct price now. Uh, on top of that, you should probably also add up the number of units to make sure that the number of units match, because that's effectively what's important. If that is the case, then basically you haven't really lost anything. Um, it's potentially a bit inconvenient because you don't know how far down you are on those trades. Uh, but again, that's still available in your history, so you can still figure it out and figure out what percentage you need uh, in profit to break even again on, on where those trades were opened originally. With regards to how this affects you guys uh, for my copy, uh, if you're copying me, basically you shouldn't really have any problems or notice any change unless you are copying me with a reasonably small amount of money. If you are copying me with less than, I would say, $1,000, then you should probably um, go through uh, the copy trading history and make sure that you have got the new positions opened, um, make sure that they're all there and all accounted for. Um, if you don't, then I would hang tight for now before putting in a support ticket because I am speaking to eToro to try and find out uh, how this has affected my copiers and, and how many of you guys may have problems reopening the position and due to how much you're copying me with. Um, but yeah, basically just hold tight for a while. Um, don't do anything crazy. There's really not too much point in putting in a support ticket because I'm effectively speaking to eToro on you guys' behalf already because I suspect there could be a few of you guys that have got problems reopening the positions. Um, hopefully we can find a good resolution. Last time something like this happened, eToro are really good about it. It took a, took a while. It took like five days or something, but after that, everything was back to where it should be. So hopefully we can do the same again and nobody's left out of pocket or anything. Next up, NVIDIA has unveiled their new graphics cards. Uh, so this is something that I speculated on for the past couple of months. Um, ahead of NVIDIA's earnings, I said that I would be holding NVIDIA through their earnings period, not because of their earnings, and I expected their earnings to be somewhat mediocre um, and, and kind of underperform with crypto, which is exactly what happened, but that I was expecting them to release new graphics cards soon, and I was expecting those graphics cards to heavily be focused on ray tracing. And that's basically exactly what happened. So uh, this past week, uh, while Gamescom has been going on over in Germany, uh, NVIDIA unveiled their new graphics cards. And to, to nobody's surprise, they are very heavily focused on ray tracing. Um, they've renamed the series to RTX instead of GTX, and uh, this is now the, the 20 series. So there's a 2060, 2070, and a 2080. Um, and basically, these graphics cards... Uh, are only marginally better than current generation uh, NVIDIA graphics cards if you're using it on the same software and games that you currently use today. And the reason for that is that basically none of, none of the software and games today are designed to work with ray tracing yet. Um, there's a lot of really interesting things about these graphics cards, actually, and I, if you're someone that's interested in this stuff, I highly encourage you to go and watch um, the speech that Jensen gave 
uh, that kind of demonstrates both the technology and how the new chips are designed. But basically, the new chips are actually segmented into different sections, and part of it contains tensor cores. So tensor cores are uh, basically what NVIDIA use in their AI graphics cards. So they're, they're stuff that's designed for big data centers and such. And the point of that is that the the tensor core is good at denoising, and that's and that's effectively how it fixes the image after it's processed it with ray tracing. So it actually means that your new graphics card, if you buy one of these graphics cards, will be pretty good at number crunching and, and a lot of AI related stuff, which is really, really cool. Um, and I think it means that there's quite a lot of room for growth in how these cards work. It really is fundamentally very different technology to the current generation of cards. Um, that being said, it does have some problems because they segmented it and, and create, created that new section for tensor cores. They also created another, uh, segmented another section of this, the, uh, chip for, uh, the ray tracing stuff as well. And because of that, you're basically left with a chip that's only marginally more powerful than the current generation, um, if it's used on today's, today's software. So I don't expect these cards actually to sell very well. Um, and that's that's why I've reduced my position in NVIDIA. That's why NVIDIA is my most traded this week, is because I closed a lot of positions in NVIDIA. Um, I'm not going to close all of them. I still, you know, I'm still bullish on NVIDIA, but I think that this generation of cards won't sell that that well because there isn't much to use these cards for at the moment. Um, you can't really get the most out of these cards right now. So that being said, um, I do think that it will help them sell a lot of the, the leftover stock that they have from the 10 series. They produced a lot of 10 series graphics cards because of the mining demand. And as we know, the cryptocurrency demand has fallen off a cliff, which has left NVIDIA with a large stockpile of graphics cards that they can't shift. Um, I assume, I haven't checked, but I assume that the price of those cards will now drop to try and, um, you know, to, to make room for the new... Uh, the new line of graphics cards and as a result i think sales of those will increase but it's going to be at a lower margin so the earnings won't be quite as good um <laughs> i know i'm kind of rambling a bit here but yeah so so basically overall still bullish on nvidia for the long term i actually think these cards have got a really really you know good growth growth curve have ahead of them um i think the the next generation that comes out after this will be really 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 good um, but I don't think this series will sell too well. I could be wrong, but I don't think that they will. Um, so as a result, reduced exposure for a little bit. I'll start rebuilding the position probably towards the end of the year. Um, but overall, pretty interesting stuff. Like, you know, this is this is the kind of stuff that I really like getting my teeth into for uh, NVIDIA and AMD and country, uh, companies like that. Next up, BitConnect. So there has been another big arrest made in the BitConnect case. Uh, this time it was out in India. So there was a guy out in um, out in India who actually was operating out of uh, Dubai. Um, and he basically was involved in the BitConnect scheme very, very early. I'm not sure that he's like the mastermind behind it or not. I haven't really found anything to suggest that he was. But he was certainly one of the earliest adopters in India. And the theory is that um, all of this kind of unfolded at a time when the rupee was being devalued and uh, currency was being taken out of circulation with very short notice. So he was building on that and building on people's fear around uh, the currency situation in India to get them to invest in BitConnect. And he personally, by the sounds of it, I'm not entirely sure on this because the wording's a bit, a bit odd, but it sounds like he basically profited from this to the tune of you know tens of millions of dollars so pretty big deal um i'm i'm happy to see more arrests in this because you know i absolutely despise people who are promoting this this scheme i was very very vocal about it at the time and actually some of you guys who are probably even watching this video now still ignored me um and i'm sorry if you did lose money in it but uh, yeah, hopefully we can we can see some justice for the people that really basically used cryptocurrency as a, a guise for what was basically just a really big Ponzi scheme. Finally, just as a very small side note for the news, um, I was on BBC South today, <laughs> so I had the BBC come and film at my house um, talking about trading and the eToro and cryptocurrency, and uh, yeah, it was cool. So 
this is basically more of a shout out than a piece of news but uh if you're one of the guys um who watched that and and you're now watching this video and trying to learn about me and figure out how to invest uh i am working on like an idiot's guide on on how to set up an eToro account how to invest how much money to invest what to do if you don't have enough money to put into eToro because realistically it's not worth doing unless you can put in at least two hundred dollars um so if you're looking to invest less than that then i'll probably push out a separate article um blog post on my website for that as well so i've got a lot of emails to go through so if you are one of those people and you're watching this video wondering why i haven't replied to your email it's because i've got a couple of hundred emails <laughs> um that i've got to look through um so yeah just stay stay tuned on that front i'll try and push out an article um to kind of brief you guys on basically how to how to do this and, and where to where to learn but watching these videos is a good start so congratulations on making it this far on to the crypto recap so as you can see guys uh three trades this week in in bitcoin nothing in anything else uh i did make a 37 percent loss on one trade this week this was actually me just refreshing a position basically although i was doing it through iota as you will see in next week's video um but basically the position had been open for you know three four maybe even five months and i just wanted to basically close it and reopen it so that a bunch of people could recopy it um hopefully doing so at a good time to avoid the spread basically and make back the spread so that those who are copying me already wouldn't even notice anything different basically i don't want to create a loss for my current copiers just to help my newer copiers um so i always i always bear that in mind and i i never try and do that so uh i closed it opened a position in iota and um some other stuff's happened since then as you'll see in next week's video but uh basically that leaves me with the other two trades which are more or less break even small loss this this week on on bitcoin trading uh, with a three percent drop and a two percent gain um some other kind of interesting um stuff in bitcoin so there's there's two things i want to talk about the first is um the technical side of things so charting wise it's looking quite interesting in bitcoin at the moment uh, i will pro try and remember to share a chart on the post after this video goes up um on etoro so that you guys can have a look for yourselves but basically i think that we're at basic a, a pretty big turning point in bitcoin it's either going to effectively finish its bottoming out move um and we're going to start rallying up uh and i would expect that to be a pretty substantial move back up to towards eight thousand dollars or we're going to see the opposite happen and we're going to head down to maybe four thousand or so or five thousand um so I'll, I'll post the chart of that on eToro after the main post so you guys can take a look for yourselves and then you know share your feedback personally i'm i'm leaning more towards it being a bullish move than a bearish move um i don't really have much to base it on technically uh but fundamentally it seems like there's been a lot of good news recently um in crypto overall not just in bitcoin and it just feels like um perhaps it would be a bit too far to head down below below five thousand dollars for example so we'll see i expect that move to unfold during this next week so kind of keep your eyes open for that i guess um and hopefully it's good news finally i just wanted to talk about the backed again so i i mentioned this a few videos ago and how i was very very bearish based on my understanding of of what the product was and how it was going to work since then there's been loads of clarification by the guys uh, who are working on this um, and actually it's really really given me a lot of confidence because it, it appears that they really uh, understand and get cryptocurrency they really understand bitcoin um, and they're actually heading down the same same route as kraken and a lot of other exchanges which is um, any leverage trades are going to be fully backed with real bitcoin so effectively um, there will be like a mandatory stop loss and they can't lose more than they have nobody's creating bitcoin from thin air um so it'll work more like bitmex as well i think bitmex works on in the same way as that too so uh overall pretty good news i'm, I'm pretty happy about that and uh it definitely makes me more confident i feel like uh effectively this is this is got the potential to to give us that outcome that we were hoping for from an etf which would really fuel a big rally in bitcoin price i think uh that being said you know it's still a way off so we'll we'll wait and see how it unfolds 
On to our stock recap, and for once, we do not have a million items lift, listed in here. Now that earnings are over and things have settled down a bit, um, but we have seen some really, really strong performance, and actually most of the stocks that I mentioned in here are the ones that are performing very, very well. So I'll start off with Etsy. Uh, another great week for Etsy. Um, closed two trades, 4.5% profit and 10% profit. I'm I'm extremely bullish based off the last earnings call. So if you haven't listened to it and you're the kind of person that gets off on earnings calls, I guess, then it's it's worth a listen. Um it just seems like there are a lot of things that they can improve about Etsy and and they're already mapped out. Um and I think uh effectively they they have that market now as well. So overall, I'm very, very bullish on Etsy. I think they've got a strong future ahead of them. It's growing into one of my biggest positions in my portfolio. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it was, you know, a good week, closed two, two positions, but I am still actively trading it. And in fact, actually trying to increase my position there onto NVIDIA, uh, six trades, all of them were profitable between 1.7% and 9%, as you can see. Um, the plan here is to reduce my exposure a bit, because as I said, I don't think it's going to perform as strongly as a lot of other, um, options that we have for the winter period, basically. Um, that's not to say that I think it will perform badly. I just don't think it will perform as well as other things. So I've been kind of slowly pulling out, pulling out of, uh, Nvidia during that time. Uh, obviously I talked about it quite a lot at length earlier. So, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I did miss out on a bit today actually spiked up by a bit more, but, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. I think we still made some good money out of it. Next up, we have Square. So again, a uh, couple of positions here. One of them was a 21.6% profit uh, position that I took out. Uh, the goal with a Square is always to try and um, close during some of the small peaks during its rally, basically, and and to rebuy lower. Um, and sometimes I'll I'll achieve that, and sometimes I won't. But for the most part, we should ride. We should outperform Square as it rallies. Um, I think Square has still got a, a great future ahead of it as well. Um, very similar to Etsy, they've got a lot of different uh, things planned out, although Square is much, much, much more diversified in terms of what it's offering. So where Etsy is really focused on effectively just one product and they have a lot of features planned for that one product, uh, Square has, you know, 10 different products that are all uh, growing at phenomenal pace. So Square's just been performing brilliantly um, and it's still one of my biggest positions uh, as well alongside Etsy um, and I, I plan on keeping it that way. I think Square you know, is, is on its way to becoming a really, really major financial company um, over the next couple of years. So you know, there's not much more to say than that really. Um, I'm just going to keep trying to trade it and taking profits when I think it's sensible to do so. Next up, AMD. So AMD has had an insane run and actually today has made it even more insane. Um, so I only actually closed one trade here last week, and that's because I, I felt like it had more more legs. Um, AMD is such a weird one for me because I've been really good at calling what they're going to do and how they're going to perform, but the stock price has often not reacted in the way that I expected it to. But this time we've done a pretty good job on it, um, as you'll find out during next week's uh, next week's episode, I guess. <laughs> um but uh, yeah, so we had loads and loads of positions way, way up. This is one of the big drivers of our portfolio change for the week. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm happy with it. I think we've probably overextended a bit on price now. As I'm recording this, the price of AMD is at about $25.50 right now, um, which is really, really high. My target for the end of this year, at the start of this year, was $18. So you can kind of put that into perspective. And and the price that we last were actually stable at was about $18. So, you know, AMD is an interesting one, but we've got some really, really good opportunities to make some more money off of AMD. Um, and honestly, Lisa has done an amazing job with the company um, over the past year or so. So I'm going to continue trading it. Again, it's going to continue to be a, a big focus point for, you know, how I trade and what I trade. Uh, but another good week, another good week. Next up, Shopify. Really nothing much to talk about here. It's been trading in the bottom of um, of a channel that's been going for almost a year now uh, in Shopify. And yeah, I was just taking advantage of the fact that it just dropped below the channel and I felt like it shouldn't have and it should have gone back up into the channel. And it did. So we made a couple of percent. 
not really too much of a big deal. Um, I think that the pace of uh, growth in Shopify is slowing down a little bit, but it's definitely still got a bit of room left. It is a less less of a major position compared to Square, Wix, Etsy, uh, AMD, and Nvidia, but it is still you know it's still something that I'm keeping a, a very close eye on. And finally, we have Tesla. So as I mentioned last week, the drama in Tesla is insane. I shared a chart. Uh, last week um, that kind of went through some of the big moments that have happened in Tesla over the past couple of couple of weeks that have led the stock to go both up and down dramatically. Um, so, you know, it may be worth going and have a look, having a look at that. But honestly, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's just been a, a nightmare really in, to try and figure out what's going on with the price there. So we made some good money on the way up. We lost some money on the way down. This was the the final position I had in it. And uh, honestly, I closed it at what is frankly a pretty bad price. And it was really not, a, really not a good moment in hindsight. Of course, at the time, I didn't think that was the case. Um, but we're out now. So, you know, it happens. I, I paid maybe three or 4% more than I needed to in terms of this loss. But I'm willing to pay that price to no longer need to worry about what's going on with Elon Musk and Tesla, at least for the next couple of months or whatever, as as they figure things out. Um, next earnings report for them is going to be very, very interesting. That's that's for sure. So on to our performance tab. And as you can see, uh, August today is uh, looking a little bit better than it was uh, up to just minus 3.2%. Um, it will be slightly different on my uh, eToro portfolio because of how basically they and I calculate the stats. I base all of my stats on this page off of the reports that I can download from eToro. Um, so as you can see, the week was good for portfolio change, 5.73%. Uh, hopefully makes up a bit for the last, uh, last few weeks. Um, I think we should probably have another positive week um, next week as well. So uh, hopefully we can turn this around and, and head into the green. I do think it's very possible for, end up, for us to end up in green at the end of August, by the way. So um, fingers crossed on it. We don't have very long left, just a few days, but I think that, uh, I think that we can do it. In terms of realized trading, uh, we would basically break even for the week, um, which isn't too bad considering the Bitcoin position. That was a $150 loss on my portfolio. Um, so that was that was a sizable amount to try and recoup from from other trades, a 37% loss um, on one position. But uh, I think I did an okay job of it. Not, not amazing, but pretty okay. Um, yeah, August to date on realized trading. Again, you know, it's it's not great, but it's not too bad. We haven't lost uh, lost as as much as we could have uh, during this pretty volatile period. Um, the Nasdaq is looking really, really strong at the moment as well. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we can continue to to push forward and again turn that that minus three point one one percent realized profit slash loss um, for the month into a green number, uh, which will be really, really nice to be honest. So looking ahead, uh, you know, what's on the horizon, what's coming up? Uh, EOS is getting closer to releasing its worker proposal system. So this is basically EOS's version of Dash's DAO. Um, basically what it is, is anyone can basically go on there and create a proposal to do something that benefits the EOS ecosystem in some way. Uh, with Dash, we've seen this used pretty often for marketing. We've seen it used for university grants. We've seen it used for um, all sorts of different things. There are a few other cryptocurrencies that also have this, but Dash was like the big one that kind of invented it and it's the first one. But yeah, it's 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 cool. Like there've there've been some teasers leaked, and it's it's getting very very close. We've also seen changes to RAM and all sorts of other stuff on EOS as well. They've made brilliant progress for the past uh, couple of months. Genuinely, uh, quite impressive. Um, in terms of projects, there's loads and loads of stuff going on uh, right now. Binance has got a vote for. Uh, which token is going to be added to the platform this month, and uh, IQ token, which is Everpedia, which is um, decentralized Wikipedia built on top of EOS, is one of the currencies in the running for that. So overall, like I'm genuine, genuinely very, very happy with the progress in EOS. Uh, EOS Wizards, again, um, so that's effectively CryptoKitties, but on EOS, that game has been doing phenomenally. It's got way more features than CryptoKitties does already, um, and it's being used a lot. So 
Uh, really, really cool stuff. It seems like a lot of people are suggesting that gaming is going to be one of the killer apps for EOS and, and what's going to help push EOS to uh, to do really well. And uh, it certainly looks that way. Similar to Bitcoin, actually, EOS also looks like it could be heading for a breakout. And this time, their breakout will be against Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin breaks out uh, for for the, the trend that I mentioned previously in the, the video for Bitcoin, and EOS breaks out against that breakout, then EOS could be heading really quite quite substantially high, like maybe $10 or so, you know, 100% gain is is possible if Bitcoin also goes up. So uh, yeah, a lot going on in EOS at the moment, an awful lot going on in EOS. And uh, I think it's looking really promising at the moment. Next up, IOTA. So IOTA was added to eToro recently, as you guys know, um, and they've been they've been doing really well. Um, Fujitsu just came out and described IOTA as the new standard protocol, which is a really really big deal. Um, I was actually out at a festival for a day um, over the weekend, and they had uh, a Bosch stand there, and Bosch are really really big on like IoT and Internet of Things. Bosch is also partnered with IOTA, if you didn't know that. Um, Fujitsu, Fujitsu, there's a there's a bunch of companies that are involved in the space, and uh, IOTA has been partnered with those companies for a pretty long time now, um, you know, approaching like a year or so. We're finally starting to see the fruits of that. So we've got a proof of concept uh, that runs entirely on IOTA that was released by Fujitsu recently. Uh, I believe it's to deal with like logistics and transportation and stuff. I haven't looked at it too much, um, but that looks really, really cool. So I'm excited to see uh, where IOTA is going to go. They saw a big price jump uh, up by about 30%, I think, or 25% uh, this week. So yeah, look, looks good for that. I think potentially maybe we're getting to the point where the the big, good, strong uh, altcoins are going to break away from some of the, the worse altcoins. Okay, a uh, slightly longer episode than, than normal this week, guys, but thanks for watching anyway. You can follow me on Twitter, on eToro, on Twitch, and YouTube, of course. Um, stay tuned, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys again next week.